Hello, everybody. Welcome to Screen, Score, and More with Zach and Julie. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our very first podcast. Say hello, Zach. Hello, Julie. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be recording this podcast with you, and I really think that it will touch a lot of people for various different reasons, but We'll get to all that. Uh, So first, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do every single day for like 12 hours, you say? Well, I'm Julie Deloizo. I was born in a log cabin. Oh, no, no, that's the other intro. (laughs) I, um, let's see. Um, I don't know where to start. Um, so I run Nordonehills.news. I started it um, nine years ago. It's a family run um, online news source. We dabbled with print uh, newspaper for a couple of years, but due to the economy and other factors, we're back to online only. Um, we're just about anywhere you can think of online. And then I also have another um, task where I am helping a client of mine with their in-flight catering business. So um, I probably work 12 plus hours um, and some days more than that, maybe on the weekends less than that. So the crazy hours are generally Monday through Friday. Um, But um, before I had the newspaper or the online news, I had an internet radio station for a year and a half. And um, before that, you know, I started doing websites. Before that, I was a computer programmer for CEI. And I live in Macedonia. I have four kids and I'm married. Um, it's going to be 30, 35 years this year. <laughs> I have to stop and think. So, well, what, but enough what about loser, me. What loser would ever run a uh, website, you know? like <laughs> I don't think we're losers. All right, I'll stop with my uh, corny jokes for the rest of our podcasts that we record. So anyway, my name is Zach, and I run Cleveland Sports Talk. I also run the cleesportstalk.com website, hence my corny joke reference. And I've been doing that for about a decade now, and it's really been a passion of mine my entire life just Cleveland sports in general, being a Cleveland sports fan, and just everything that comes with being a fan, just getting to know various people that are like me and also um, enjoy the Browns, Cavs, then Indians, now Guardians, and just the connection that we've built. So it's been a wonderful decade so far and I continue to enjoy running the website and uh, writing and editing and posting everybody's articles and just following the teams so I guess we should talk about how we met we were dating and then uh, (laughs) you and the jokes we're we're not supposed to tell people that right (laughs) you and the jokes um, actually, we probably don't even remember when we first met. <laughs> How is that for um, an introduction? Um, but what la- last year we connected because I actually had found your website when I was searching around and I'm like, wow, this is really nice. It's a, you know, Cleveland sports and I like how the website was organized and everything. And then I saw it was run by Zach Shafron and I'm like, that sounds familiar. And of course, I've known your dad for years. And I'm like, wow, Zach is doing a great job with this. And then, you know, I don't know if you reached out to me or I reached out to you, but um, your dad connected us. And, um, you know, we have a lot in common with dealing with all of the things that we have to deal with running our sites and, um, you know, our interests, especially we both love the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, so I remember actually seeing an email from you that just said, hey, Zach, I like what you're doing, uh, and kind of asking if you wanted to connect in that way. 
So I thought it was cool to finally receive a email from someone that wasn't a spam message from <laughs> a guy that's in India that uh, wants to purchase something or sell something to me. So that was nice. And so, yeah, we've connected and, and uh, been uh, affiliated with each other for a couple of years now. And so it's been quite a journey and it, and it continues to be successful. So yeah, it's uh, been nice just, again, doing what I do with uh, my website, but also uh, connecting with you as well. Well, we should say the day of this recording is February 10th. And there is a big sporting event happening tomorrow. Absolutely. The Super Bowl is probably the biggest event in America each year. I mean, there, there are certainly others that, that rival it, but it's just something that everybody in this country and really around the world watches no matter if your team that you love is in the game or not you're going to be watching and hopefully you have some family or, or friends that you uh, go to a, a party with or a gathering with and you watch the Super Bowl together and enjoy yourself and have have a good time I know I'm going to a party with some family friends which will be nice and then just even though my beloved Browns are once again not in the Super Bowl, which has been a pattern really my entire life, but we don't have to get into that. Uh, it's just a nice event that uh, this country uh, just loves, and, and there's always a cool Super Bowl um, halftime show that uh, everybody likes to watch. Everybody loves the commercials and uh, that type of thing, so I really just enjoy the event and like i said of course it's sad um our beloved browns not gonna make it this year again but it's still a great thing to watch so who now, are you watching the uh the game with what are your plans oh um i'll just probably watch it uh, i don't know it's so late <laughs> um i don't even know if i'll watch the whole thing but you know um i don't know maybe some of my family um, I like the one o'clock game, so maybe we could talk to them about having it one o'clock next year. Um, but we should say who's playing. And I, all I can think of is the chiefs. I can't remember who they're playing. So the chiefs are playing the 49ers. Oh, that's right. Hmm. And... I must say this year, I think a lot of Browns fans thought we had a more, a, a better chance of getting to the Super Bowl than normal. Most of us still didn't think that they were gonna go, but we had a better chance uh, when um, Flacco was hot, um, right up until he wasn't. But um, a lot of things happened the very last game. It wasn't just the quarterback, but um, it was very exciting watching Flacco and everything he did for the team. And, you know, um, all of the players, how they all kind of came together as a team beaten and battered and it was quite an amazing season. So um, for me, it was the Brown season at the end there. And even in the playoffs was a little more exciting than normal. And I don't know, a little bit of me wanted to see them in the Super Bowl. O only a, a little bit of you. Well, I mean, a little bit of me thought there might be kind of a chance, oh, like a like a chance, yeah, a chance, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it was more more just about the fact that the road to the Super Bowl in the playoffs is just such a a difficult journey, and even if you have some success with a a new quarterback addition like the Browns did with Flacco. I mean, there definitely was some speculation that who knows, maybe this team could be the uh, miracle team. And because of the new quarterback, they could actually win those games in the playoffs and, and make it to the Super Bowl. But it, it just it wasn't a uh, likely scenario. And there was so much adversity that you already uh, mentioned with the injuries and, and the various uh 
different issues with quarterbacks and all these changes and just it, it I guess just wasn't meant to be but you know the team had great success um Stefanski got coach of the year Miles Garrett got defensive player of the year Flacco got the comeback kid award um wasn't there a fourth one yeah it was uh Jim Schwartz won the uh defensive play not player defensive coach of the year excuse and me and he's not even no longer with us right um it it's not uh entirely certain what will will happen with the coaching staff so it, it sort of remains to be seen yeah well we'll see so um i guess we should probably talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about on future podcasts so people will come back next time yeah absolutely i actually ironically because we were just talking about sports this last like i don't know 10 minutes i really feel like a, a lot of this podcast is going to be about other things and for example for me even though i run cleveland sports talk i would like to be talking about uh, various different subjects and then i could speak on your behalf i believe that you aren't going to be wanting to talk about all the happenings in uh the various nordonia cities and areas and all the news that you cover every, every single day so um is is that true as well well what I will say is um, I want people all over everywhere to watch this. And I think people in Oklahoma, for example, don't necessarily care what's happening, you know, on Route 82 in Macedonia. However, there are some topics that are coming up here in town that people all over the country have to deal with. So there will be some topics that we talk about that are, you know, in town here, but people can relate to. So we'll try to reserve it to things that they can relate to. And in regards to sports, I mean, we have to give something for people to watch because after the Super Bowl, I mean, I mean, unless you're a basketball fan, it's like there's going to be kind of like, what are we going to, what are we going to watch? What are we going to do? Yeah. And and speaking of what are we going to watch, that is another topic that I want to talk about. Um, I am a fan of reality shows, documentaries, movies, and music. And so there's always a lot to talk about there. I want to let people know what new shows are like a season three of, um, oh, there's season three is coming up on uh, one of the shows I watch. Of course, can't think of it right now. Um, but, you know, when there's a new season coming out, you know, some people may not have heard about it. There's so many channels there's so many shows and it's hard to keep them them track so you know i might give a review about a movie or a book or or music and i know that you know you have interests in some of these areas as well yeah for sure and i i think a big part of this podcast that people are going to like that is kind of different than say your other average podcast is really the actual differences between us. I mean, let's be honest, there's an age difference between us. I'm not going to say our ages, but uh, <laughs> uh, people will will kind of relate to each of our differences in, in that sense. I'm a boy, you're a girl. and uh, I'm married, you're not. Exactly. I was just going to say we're not <laughs> together. So, so that's an, another just fyi for everybody so <laughs> i think that a lot of people will connect to us in the sense that they can say hey i relate to that woman or hey i'm kind of like that young dude younger dude i'm not, I'm not that young but and i think that because of in in that sense the listeners will really connect with that and I just give an example. I know you don't like Howard Stern, but I will just say that I I think the fact that him and his co-host Robin are so different 
yet they make a way to just have it work. And I, I really just feel like that's an example. And obviously I'm not like Howard Stern and you're not like Robin, but we have our differences. And I think that people will like that. So I think we're more like Batman and Robin. No, <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah. The, the thing I don't like about Howard is, well, actually two things. He's like a shock jock which I'm not a fan of. And he's very disrespectful to women. Well, he's, um, so he's obviously actually, I, I will say in regards to Howard and, and you're not wrong, but he has changed a lot from say when he was much younger and over the years, I feel like he's become less of this, so to speak, shock jock that he once was. And he's a little bit better now. Um, but I can see why there are so many Howard Stern haters as well. Yeah, I mean, because but you know what? Know. Even in his day when he was a shock jock, so many people were, you know, loved his show. And, and you know, again, it's like everybody has difference of opinions. And, you know, he is mellower now. But to me, I, you know, can't get over his past. And, um, you know, I just... Dis dis disagree with that type with what he was doing and how he was doing it but um you know i'm glad to hear that he has mellowed out some um but he doesn't need to now you know before he he did that to get the ratings and get the people and it's like you know i don't want to use that tactic to get fans um you know people will like us some people won't and you know that's the way the cookie crumbles but I think it shows a true character when people do a show. It's like he would he if he was playing a part and he wasn't like that, then then he was a good actor. I'll say that. Well, yeah, absolutely. And it is true. I, I do feel like there's a part of a part of running say a a brand or a, a website or a radio show or, or something where it's actually a good thing even if you get like the quote-unquote haters because that just sh shows that people care enough to hate you <laughs> and even if they do not like you and they, they voice it and you're like upset about it I actually feel like in a lot of ways that, that can be a good thing for your brand just because it shows that you know people actually take the time to resent you so to speak and while it may not be pleasant it also could show the value of your publication even though they may not see the value in it but um i feel that since covid um people feel like we we know more what people were thinking before people just say their mind now they they don't have a filter and i think we're still surprised about that because you know back in the day people didn't say certain things and they kind of kept their feelings maybe they they kind of felt like they couldn't uh, give their opinion but there a lot of people are definitely have no qualms about that now so you know that's a there's a good side of that and a bad side to it but you know at least uh i love it when people comment who cares and it's like commented on a post that has like a thousand people commenting and so it's like obviously somebody cares and the fact that they took the time to type that kind of shows that they must kind of care about it exactly and that, that kind of goes along the lines of what I was was just saying about how if somebody does take the time to say something negative it shows that they care enough to voice their opinion and it shows the value of your website radio show whatever it is exactly so you know um kind of like to do a little preview of our next show what types of you know tv shows or movies or whatever what are your interests in regards to things on the streaming devices or cable or you know we used to call it tv we still call it tv but it's really not TV anymore. So what do you like to watch? Well, my favorite movies are the Rocky films. And 
myself and my father have bonded over these movies. And of course, Carl Weathers, who played Apollo Creed in the movies, uh, just recently, unfortunately, passed away. And uh, he wasn't young, but he wasn't too old either. And so it was very sad to see him pass away. And of course, I, I loved his character of Apollo Creed just, just for a number of reasons. I felt like he was able to carry himself as this classy man, but he also had like this sort of attitude and uh, like just overall classiness to him. And he was also able to play this boxer that many say represented the late great Muhammad Ali, who was actually a real boxer. And so that is also very cool, just kind of based on how his character was made and how, uh, of course, Sylvester Stallone wrote the part and how it became what it has been in this iconic movie that everybody knows about Rocky. So, Or they should. Peace, my friend. Um, big fan. I'm a big fan of Rocky. Uh, you know, I should say I was more of a fan back when they were coming out. Um, but I am a big fan of Sylvester Stallone and some people think he was actually a boxer and then became an actor, but he wrote the Rocky, uh, you know, himself. And, um, he well, is well, quite a, had quite a start. If you want to talk about that. Well, if you want to know a fun fact, it was actually a real fight that Sylvester Stallone and, and uh, many people say that he saw this fight and it gave him the inspiration to write the Rocky series about an underdog that had really no chance, but he was able to fight and, and make a name for himself because of this. So it was, and what's so cool about this is it was at the Richfield Coliseum and it was Chuck Wepner who fought Muhammad Ali. And this was a fight where Nobody thought that this Wepner guy had any chance, and yet he was able to fight him well, this being Muhammad Ali. So people have cited this as a fight that inspired Stallone to write the Rocky script and make the film the greatness that it's become. And the coolest part, as I've said, is that it actually took place at the Richfield Coliseum in Ohio. Very cool. I didn't even know that. That's amazing. Um, what other, um, do you watch anything, any new series or any newer movies? Not really newer. I mean, my favorite, I guess, show is probably Dexter. And the, the reason I, I like Dexter is because it really messes with your mind in the sense that here is this guy who, he kills people, which you would think automatically like, oh, what a terrible person. But the nuance is that he kills people that are like terrible people. And so because of that, he is looked at upon as this actual good guy because he's killing bad people. And so the storyline of Dexter really is that the character himself is able to get away with these murders and there are people that are trying to find him and so it's just a really cool series if, if you want to check it out oh i love dexter and i wish they would have continued it but um the other part of that that is really cool is um he actually works his job is cleaning up the scenes so he'll actually a lot of times clean up the scene that he created he was like one of the investigators yeah and it's funny because he works with 
a lot of the people that are trying to find the quote unquote killer, which is really him. And so, yes, yeah, exactly. Right. Like the whole this. And he always says tonight's the night before a uh, night that he's going to kill someone. And he has like this addiction to murdering people. But because of it, it still works because, like I said, they're bad people. So it's like a good thing, too. Now, um, I'm now, I'm getting a notification here. I have a paid version of Zoom, but for some reason, it's telling me that we only have like nine minutes left. So I, I'd have to, I'll have to check my subscription and make sure that I'm paid up for the next show. So let's talk at the very end. Um, you have some surgery coming up, and I thought people might be interested in that. So we should make sure we talk about that before we go. Well, thank you for, for bringing that up. And yes, I do have a, a surgery coming up. So I have epilepsy and I want to preface this by saying I understand that epilepsy isn't the same as a, a cancer diagnosis or something like that. But the hardest part about epilepsy is just the amount of hindrances that it causes on your life you're not really able to go places you never know when you're going to have a seizure it's difficult because you lose your independence you're not able to drive and just everything that comes with that so this upcoming surgery is basically the doctors are going to eventually take a part out of my brain that they believe is causing the surgery or excuse me the seizures and so it's a pretty serious surgery I've had lots of different testing and doctor's appointments and various different things to try and make sure that everything is, you know, up to par and, and ready to go. And the idea is that hopefully with the surgery, it will remove the seizures from my brain. And so that would be a nice change for me, hopefully in the upcoming future. Yeah, I think you're very brave and, um, to be, you know, dealing with everything you deal with every single day. And now adding to the fact that you're going to have to have surgery and, you know, wondering about that. And it, you know, there's always a risk with every surgery. And, you know, I had gallbladder surgery and I was even like worried about that. So, um, you know, you have a lot on your plate right now and, um, you had both of your grandmothers pass and, um, I had a brother pass in October and, you know, we've been through a lot and we, you know, I think a lot of people will identify with that as well. For sure. And the, the piece of advice I would give to um, anybody that is, is listening to this is that it's not lame or anything at all to, you know, give your either a grandmother, grandpa, an aunt, uncle, anybody a call or just just visiting with family or, or close friends because uh unfortunately you never know what the uh, future holds and uh most of the time with uh people passing and and this was the case with both of my grandmothers is that we we knew that the end was near and it sucks it's sad it's hard to watch and hard to see, but at least you kind of have like a a warning of what's going to happen in the future. But I hate to say it for, for some people, it could be an unexpected accident or a, uh, a, I don't know, car crash or a heart attack or just listing all these terrible things, but it's God always forbid. good. Yeah. It's always good to just, reach out and i know the term yolo is like used a lot of the time jokingly you only live once 
but I think it's very true. And what people should take from that is just you want to treat each day as a day where you're trying to accomplish something or um, even if it's something as simple as giving, you know, grandma a call or uh, going to a friend's house that's that's struggling or, or just doing um, something that is of value because like we've been saying, you really don't know and you don't want to take each day and, and be like freaking out about uh, something happening, but at the same time, you kind of want to balance it out and uh, make something of it. Absolutely. And um, I think, you know, sometimes people take it for granted. They'll just like, oh, you know, I'll worry about that tomorrow. It's like, you know, you should try to do as much you can with each day. Because like you said, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, okay, Zach. The uh, last thing I will say about oh. my grandma's is that I felt like I took each day with both of them and, and made sure that I either gave them a call or, or visited or, or did what I could. So now, even though they're unfortunately gone, um, I do feel like I made the most of each day. Well, that's, at least you did have time with them. So that's a blessing. Okay. Sure. What I was going to say, because we're getting near the end, give us your Super Bowl pick. So I've been picking the Chiefs to win. And I think that my reasoning is just simply the quarterback that they have in, in Patrick Mahomes. And I know the Chiefs didn't have the greatest of seasons, but I, I just, for some reason, I feel like they're going to win. What about you? Well, I'm going to go with Taylor Swift and pick the Chiefs. <laughs> she has been a big fan. And, um, you know, we've talked about it personally before about how she's really kind of like helped bring more fans to the NFL and the Chiefs. But I will say I just saw recently that in high school, someone's yearbook quote, like, what do you want to see in the future? And someone said, Mahomes Super Bowl ring. So I thought that was kind of cool. Everybody has their dreams for sure. So uh, I want to thank everybody for, for listening. And uh, hopefully uh, we will be able to continue recording. I, I, I'm thinking like a weekly edition of, of this if, if we can. So that will be nice. And we'll have various topics and uh happenings about what's going on in the world and it's going to be exciting right absolutely there's so much you know to talk about in the upcoming weeks and months and um you know we'll see where things go thanks for uh joining me zach thanks for having me and uh once again thank you to everybody who listened and Yep, yeah, try and find us every week. Bye, everybody.